What's up guys, my name is Matt, and holy crap, Taken King information. Now normally, normally I don't do this kind of video, but holy crap, there's a ton of information, and this game is gonna be nothing like we are playing right now in the next month and 11 days. In a month and 11 days, this game is going to be completely turned on top of its head, and we're gonna have a totally, totally different game. So there was a Reddit post, and this Reddit post was taken from Game Informer because there was, a, I guess, an article on Game Informer talking about the Taken King. Now, there's actually two links in the description. One is the main dump mega thread, and the other one is a comment by one of the people that was adding to this mega thread. And there's a lot of information in both that aren't exactly the same on each. And I'm going to try to quickly go over every single little piece here. Normally I don't do guides, but holy crap, this game's going to change. First thing, level cap now raised to 40. No longer is it 20, it'll be raised to 40. And that's not level cap, like, light level 40. It's level 40. Like, we now stop at 20, we're going to be stopping at 40. The crypto rewards from Engrams are now in, more in line with the type of Engram you got. I'm not exactly sure what that means. I'm assuming if you get a heavy weapon, you're going to get a heavy weapon. And if it's an exotic, you're going to get an exotic. I don't know why that has to really be... I thought that was the case already, but I guess it's more in line. This one, this one. A lot of people complain about the fact that the, the Destiny has no story... And then other people are like, but the lower, and the, but it's in Grimoire, but you have to go to Bungie.net. Well, now your ghost can now scan objects to offer more insight into the world's lore, i.e. scan a Cabal so soldier. It'll give you information on their military regiment. Here's one. You can now turn in bounties without returning to the bounty board. That's right. If you're just standing in the Cosmo Drone and you want to turn in a bounty, boom, turned in. No question. Intelligence, Discipline, and Strength now have numical tiers that decide their influence on your character. Now, one thing that was kind of weird when I was looking at, like, all the vidocs and all the footage from, like, E3 and everything around that time, everything was, like, 12 intellect and 7 discipline. I was like, what the hell is this? This explains it. No longer are we going to have, like, 110. That'll probably be, like, a 12 or an 11. An 11 tier, It'll, it'll those tiers decide how they influence your character. Now, this one. A new progress system where you sacrifice an existing piece of gear that belongs to the same slot. Now, that's the only information we got. A lot of people are saying, is this transmogs? A lot of people are saying, like, can we add more stats to our stuff? Can I take a perk from here and put it there? There's a lot of things, but it's literally a new progress system where you sacrifice an existing piece of gear that belongs in the same slot. The next thing, the tower and its NPCs. That would be literally the tower and everyone there. The Cryptarch, the Gunsmith, Eris Morn, all the vanguards, all of them have been retooled to offer quest, story, insight into the world as you level up your character from 1 to 40. Now, my assumption is, is that if we're already level 34, because there's rumors and a statement somewhere, I can't exactly find it, but my good friend Clicks mentioned it, that there's no more light levels. So I'm assuming that everyone will be bumped back down to 20, and we'll have to level up from there right when the Taken King drops. Kind of sucks, but at the same time, who cares? Because light level 40, or level 40, not even light level, is a thing. But holy crap, insight into the world, just more story and lore, as well as more quests from the NPCs in the tower, crazy. The entire... Base game expansion retooled for narrative and access purposes to make much more sense. After meeting the queen for the first time, the reef is open to you. So no longer do you have to like get level 20 and that stuff. Things make more sense. If you meet the queen, you can go to the reef. If you meet this person, you can go there. Now this one. The gunsmith now has a rep. And the higher your rep, the more prototype weapons he offers for you to test in the field. Now he says, prototype weapons and test in the field are in quotes for more reputation. Reaching a certain rep with Banshee allows you to access quote-unquote Arms Day, a weekly purchase that allows you to order legendary gums with Glimmer. Oh my god. On top of that, the gunsmith isn't useless anymore. He actually has a use and he has a reputation, yet another reputation to level up. Crucible and Vanguard Marks are gone. The new thing is called Legendary Marks. And they're used for the Legendary Vendor purchases. So you get just Legendary Marks. No longer do you get Crucible and Vanguard Marks. You can play Crucible, you can play Vanguard. Boom, you're getting Legendary Marks. Doesn't matter. Doesn't force you to play Crucible if you don't want to. Thank God, Bungie. Now this one. This one's also very good. Class-specific materials needed for upgrading are gone. That's right, Herodric Essence, Armor Plating, or the Plus Steel Plating, and the Sapphire Wire have been replaced with Armor Materials, making it easier to utilize materials on one character towards another to progress them. That's right, I was pre predominantly a Warlock. I have like 3,000 Hadronic Essence and like 100 Plus Steel Plating and like 75 Sapphire Wire. 
Soon as taking king drops, I'm gonna have 2300 of this new armor material, and that's freaking amazing. Now this one, this one is also like the changes. I can't. I'm I'm excited, and you guys should be excited for this as well. But you are no longer forced to wear a class item when leveling up New Monarchy, Dead Orbit, or Future War Cult. You pledge to each faction. Now, it also has been clarified that you don't need to pledge to that and you're stuck with them. You can just only pledge to one at a time. So you're like, I feel like leveling up Dead Orbit. You go to the Dead Orbit guy, you pledge to the Dead Orbit guy, and all your all your reputation goes to him. Then, you get it to the level you want, boom, go pledge to New Monarchy. Get it to the level what? boom, I'm gonna go back to Dead Orbit. You can do that now, and that's awesome. And with those, speaking of those vendors, you can now turn the materials to the factions that I just mentioned for rep gain. I'm assuming that includes the new legendary marks as well as like relic iron and stuff like that just giving them materials allows you to level them up as well making it easier to level them up this one i know i have this issue i love my shaders i like to collect the shaders but there's no room for the shaders and i delete shaders all the time well now there's a new system that records all shaders and once you've gained it you'll be able to choose from it anytime you visit this new system. It also shows you the shaders you don't own and how to obtain them. No longer is your inventory going to be filled with shaders. You can just go to this computer and be like, I want to put on my chatter white. I want to put on my glow who. How do I get the glow who? Well, I do hard mode raid for Crota's end. Boom. That's how you do it. And that's great. Oh my God. Now that system also applies to emblems. That's right. You're like, oh, it's uh, it's Iron Banner. Where did oh, did I dismantle my Iron Banner? Now I can't get the rep game. Boom! It's actually in the system. You don't need to worry about it anymore. All the new exotics, or it says new exotics, since they all are tied into quest lines, which means you'll have to do a quest to get the exotics, and it's more guaranteed. And speaking of new exotics, a railgun fusion rifle heavy weapon exotic. I'm gonna repeat that again. Railgun fusion rifle heavy weapon exotic. One more time. Railgun. Fusion Rifle Heavy Weapon. Exotic. We're getting railguns, boys. Railguns. That's right. Railguns. There's also eight new Crucible maps being implemented in the game, as well as a weekly Crucible and Trials bounties. Complete all five of the weeklies for the week, and you get access to a sixth one that has a chance to reward you either legendary or exotic gear. That's right. Trials. New boss mechanics that aren't purely bullet spongy, and Crucible now has a mercy rule. That mercy rule, if the teams are unbalanced and you're getting your ass kicked, it'll end the game early and just be like, mercy, we understand there's only two people on your team and there's six on the other and you're down by 10,000 points, and you don't have to wait for the end of the game. The game recognizes that now. Now that's the main thread. Now, on to this guy, Reddit user Dem Powers also added some more information. There's a lot of information, guys, and I'm sorry if this video is long, but I'm trying to go through it as fast as I can, and hopefully the Crucible gameplay or whatever I put in the background is at least somewhat entertaining for you guys to watch while I ramble on forever. Now, we're getting a new ghost. That new ghost is Nolan North. I don't know who that is. I'm actually going to Google that right now, so please hold up it right back. I feel like an idiot. Nolan North is the guy who voices Drake in Uncharted 2 Among Thieves. That's right, the new ghost is Drake from Uncharted. No more Peter Dinklage, it is now Nolan North. This was mentioned earlier, but Taken enemies wield brand new effects, such as Taken captains wearing solar shields and throwing out orbs of darkness that blind, knights flinging AoE scorch, centurions shooting tracking rounds, wizards summoning thralls, scions splitting in two, vandals deploying defender-like shields that allow them to shoot out and heal, phalanxes shoot projectiles from the shields, and thralls teleport into battle. All items will offer perk customization. No longer just weapons, but this includes weapons, armor, class items, and even your ghost. Everything can be customized. And it even says all items will offer perk customization and even your ghost. There are new quest lines where Eris Morn gives you a quest that leads to the rediscovery of a forgotten weapon type. I'm assuming that Eris Morn's like, here's how you get the railgun. When it comes to exotics, there's at least a dozen new exotics and at least half dozen armor exotics per class. So I'm going to go ahead and do rough math. There's 30 new exotics being added to the game. A new auto rifle exotic that shoots blast of lightning, a sniper rifle that blinds nearby enemies on precision hit, or the new pulse rifle called No Time to Explain that fits the role of a high level stranger's rifle that refuels bullets directly to the magazine on precision hits. As I mentioned previously, exotics are tied to quests. One example of that though is require it requires you that you explore the dreadnought to find the hidden pieces throughout. Now the dreadnought it's has a lot of things hidden with it this is just another thing that you can find oh I found the piece to the thing and oh there's the other piece to the thing that's crazy 
There are three new game modes, most of which have been covered so far. That's Rift and Mayhem. We know what those are, but a new one called Zone Control, which is just control with kills not counting towards the score. Now, if you don't know who Lord Shax is, he's the guy for the Crucible. But if you don't know and you don't want to know who that is, it's too late because I already spoiled it for you. But there's a new dedicated quest line that introduced players to the Crucible and respective NPCs like Lord Shax. There are even more bounties, and those include simpler bounties that have been made and more difficult bounties being available, and even fire team based bounties for PvP. As I mentioned earlier, Trials now has bounties associated with it and the whole weekly thing. The whole storyline is separated into acts. The first act has eight, quote, lengthy story missions, with the second act including additional story missions, strikes, exploration, triggered public events, weapon quests that all lead to the introduction of the new raid, and it's the first time we know the name, it's called The King's Fall. Quests in Act 2 revolve around the Taken War, includes quest line, Unsealed Paradox, which returns you to the Vault of Glass and reveals the fate of Praedith. And the last thing that is in here that I felt like was sharing, and I know I talked forever here, is presence of quote-unquote raid-like, raid light, which I'm assuming is raid mechanics but easier in strikes. Bungie is hesitant to make strikes too complicated due to griefing, but we will have raid-like mechanics in strikes. I think I got it all, guys. I think I did, and that was a long video. But I hope you, I hope you enjoyed this video of me talking incredibly quickly and covering everyone. Wants. Links in the description if you want to go read all this yourself. Uh, both links are down there. But uh, my name is Matt, and wholly generic video, but it was important, and there's a lot of information there. I'll see you guys next time.